Hello, people. If anyone is watching yet, I don't know. If you want to join me so you can actually talk and stuff to, rather than typing, you can join via that link. <coughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to wait a minute. Get set up. <gasps> nice. Good to see you, Bail Norn. All right. So has anybody used Google Forms a bunch or not a lot? Where you guys kind of stand with it? Also, if you can't hear me, let me know and I'll speak up. Hi, Noah. Welcome. Um, again, if you guys want to jump into the stream with me rather than just me doing it by myself, you don't have to do it via camera. You can just have audio on if you want to talk. Um, you just follow the link that's on the screen there and you'll jump in. You might have to download the Be Live app. Yeah. Uh, Bailnor and I have a lot of fun with uh, Google Forms. Honestly, Google's like Google Drive has a lot of free cool tools that um, I love to utilize, especially for AmpGuard. Um, I don't like spending money on things that I won't really be using, so it's nice to have something that's free. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's dive in then. Um, so here I have like a, just kind of a preview of what we're going to be building. Um, so you've got a sign in date here, um, which is kind of cool because it'll make it so that way the date format is always the same versus if you have people just manually type it in themselves, sometimes they'll do like month, day, year, uh, day, month, year, whatever, they'll change it up and it gets confusing and hard for you to track. Um, secondary part I put here is like type of sign in. So um, you could move towards using Google Forms via on your phones or if like somebody in your group has a tablet that they always bring out, like I always have a tablet when I go to IO. Um, you could have that on here. So I got fighter practice, Saturday, Sunday, park day, um, an online activity. So like stuff that we've been doing at the parks. Um, and then also event day, such as like mid rain or coronation listed on there. Hi, Bail Norn. Um, Um, let's see. And then next I've got, um, your basic name questions. So mundane, your real name, persona, amp guard name, a uh, list of lands and an other category. So if somebody's watching an online, for, uh, content, or if they are traveling to your land from a different kingdom, they can input that there manually, which is cool. Kingdom principality. And then um, this one is a drop down. So uh, when we see the actual, it will have all of these listed out. And then you can also add in like fun questions like 
Um, did you enjoy the content of the day? Um, you can add long answer text messages. So um, if people have questions uh, about the day, like maybe they want to see more things happening, like maybe, or maybe there's a battle game that didn't go on as well as they would like. Um, but yeah, so lots of cool things. So, um, and then you can preview it real quick so you guys can kind of see how it looks once it's all put together. So this would be the version that your players would see after it's put together. Um, so these are like bubbles that you'd select. This one's a drop down, which is cool. So let's make one, shall we? Oh, wait. Sorry, I got to reshare the tab. There we go. Um, so again, so this is like how it looks um, when a person is actually using it. So rather than you editing, this is how uh, someone would sign in with it. Okay. All right. Um, so first off, in order to use Google Forms, you need to have a Gmail account. Oh, no, it's got a question. Um, so he says, could you use Google Forms to track rolling details into a Google Sheet, like use the docs to track player in-game gold for a special series of multi-week events or something? Yeah, you definitely could. You'd have to create the questions. Like you could, if they want to um, update the amount of gold they have every day, you could have them fill out the form like, Hey, how much gold did you collect? How much did you lose? Um, and then you could input that data straight into a sheet. And I'll show you how to link the Google form into a sheet, um, which is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, so here I will go to the main drive so we can just start off. Um, so again, you'll have to be in your gmail account and then you'll go to drive.google.com <laughs> and then it'll have lots of awesome um uh things that you can use so you've got uh google docs which is like google's version of like word sheets slides and then under this more category uh is forms I haven't used drawings or maps a whole lot, so I, um, maybe I will one day. But uh, so forms is the one that I use probably the most. OK, so here it starts off blank. Um, there's a couple other things that you can do. You can change the color. Um, so I always like to change it to match like the land's colors. It, um, so like if it was IO, I might change it to green because there's a lot of green in our heraldry. Um, if it's the kingdom, maybe I'll make it blue or whatever. Um, but so you can change the colors. You can also add images. So let's see. I've got... You can upload. Um, so let's see. I've got Flooded Mountains Heraldry on here. So let's just throw that in if that works. Let's see. Um, and see, so then, then the thing with the images is that it's kind of like a banner, like if you would imagine um, like your Facebook group banner. So they only fit a certain amount. But then you can throw that in. And it kind of adds this cute cute coloring background to it make it a little bit more personalized again you can add heraldry whatever um so this first box here is always going to be like your title box so you could put name so we're going to put practice sign in sheet and then you could put a description um so if this was for like your park i would put um You put in like online version of land sign-in sheet or whatever you want. 
Um, cool banner, I know, yeah. <laughs> Just stealing it from flooded mountains. Uh, so first question. So the first question we had on our uh, form that I showed you earlier, the little preview, was a date. So we're going to put sign in date. And this box over here gives you different selections. So since I had that keyword date, it kind of automatically changed for me. But again, you have like short answer, paragraphs, multiple choice, checks, check boxes, drop downs. Um, you can upload a file onto there, all these things. But so what we want is the date. And so this is going to change it. So that way, whenever a player comes in to input that information, again, it'll go month, day, year, and it'll always be the same. Uh, the second thing you want to do is hit the required button. So this is one of those questions that's required when you're filling out your sign-in sheets, especially once you start importing it into an Excel spreadsheet, because it'll make it easier to sort through the sheet if it's getting used multiple times. So if we use this sign-in sheet eight times, you want to know the different days so you can correctly put those credits into the ORC. Otherwise, you're going to be like, guess everybody signed in 80 times in one day, and you would never know. Um, so next, we're going to add a question, which is this little plus box right here. Boop. All right. And, and so that one is going to be the type of sign-in. So you can do this a couple ways. Um, I like to do multiple choice on this one because it shows all of the options right away to the players so that way they just don't select any random one um but you could also do uh the drop down box if you don't want it to take up a bunch of space but we'll leave it at multiple choice for now so i practice Ooh. helps if i can spell we'll just pretend this is a saturday park You could also have Arts and Science Night. Um, event day. Pretty much whatever you want. Online event. And then you'll also want to mark that as required. Um, because certain days, you know, your monarchs might be giving double credit days. So if it's a event day, maybe that's a double credit day. So that's uh, makes it important to mark because then you as a prime minister can go back and be like, oh, okay, that's right. This was coronation. So I should make that two credits or whatever. And then again, marking it as required. We're going to add question again. We're just going to keep going. Um, do you guys have any questions at all, or is there anything on a sheet that you would like to see? So this one's going to be a short answer, because obviously they're going to type in their own name. You're not going to have a checkbox for all 50 players that go to your park or whatever. So <laughs> short answer, and then... Oh, um, this one should also be required. You need to know who they are when they're signing in. Persona name. Um, some of you are probably wondering why I'm putting, like, why I listed mundane real name, persona, and guard name. Um, just because there's some people who don't, um, know the difference between what one is what so good to list um did i have this video advertised for at least two weeks no i did not this was just kind of spur of the moment and then again we're going to make this required because there could be 80 mics and only one killian you know um next question we did was uh, land. So I'm not going to type out all the lands like I did before, but we'll just type out a few. So like um, um, 
And then you could do this one. Um, <clears throat> uh, you'll have to do this one as multiple choice. Multiple choice is the only one that will give the option of adding that other box where they can manually input. So again, if they're traveling or viewing your video from um, a different uh, region that's not Northern Lights, you'll want to add in that other box. So we'll put like, and then, so right here it has the add option of add other. That's the one where they'll be able to type it in. And this one we could put like, Shrouding mist. And then again, make it required. Is this the same video you were talking about or was it for Friday? Oh, uh, Friday's video on the 10th, that's gonna be um, the Crown AMA. This one I advertised literally yesterday and was like, hey, I wanna do this thing. So um, yeah. <laughs> uh, next question will be uh, what kingdom or principality? And then this one I like to leave as a short answer just because I don't want to have to list out like what all 22 kingdoms that we have now or whatever. Uh, could you change the land from a drop down to a multiple choice so you can include a picture of the land's banner heraldry? Um, actually, so you can do that. So there's this little image right here. So you can go boop with multiple choice. And I actually have one of... Uh, Inland Oceans, Heraldry, I believe. So let me add that. Um, so now, uh, when you're looking at the land box uh, from under multiple choice, so it'll say the name and it'll have their Heraldry. Um, let's see, I'll also add um, flooded mountains because I have theirs on here as well. So let's see. So you can see what it looks like with two. Be being very careful not to call them flooded plains because I saw somewhere that people keep calling them that. <laughs> so. See, so now you could have their heraldries right there. Uh, could be cool to do multiple choice for class two. Put a picture of each class as next to each multiple choice answer. That could be cool. Yeah, uh, you could take the pictures maybe from the um, rules of play. I don't know if that would be copyright infringement or not. I don't know. Um, or come up with your own pictures. Um, John Johnson says, maybe I missed it. Why not leave land as a short answer? Um, so you could do that, but I prefer to do it as multiple choice to prevent people from making spelling errors. Um, so again, we'll be uploading this into a spreadsheet. And so the great thing about spreadsheets is that you can organize things based off of a query. So if you go into the land column and try to sort by that, if somebody spells inland ocean, different eight times, then they're not all going to query in the same section. So I like to do it by multiple choice to prevent that spelling error. Um, hi, Ormus. Welcome to the stream. Um, so I'll show you guys real quick in the preview how this would look with those Um, so the cool thing about Google also is that it's constantly saving in your drive. So every time I spell out a single word on this form, it's automatically getting saved. So if my computer were to shut down right now, none of my work would be lost. And that's another feature that I really love about Google Drive because I'm always not saving. Um, 
so yeah, so you got your, your name, the date here. So then here you scroll down and then these ones do have the picture with the heraldry. So that is a really cool idea. Um, and, so, and a feature that I almost forgot about. All right. Um, oh wait, sorry, I gotta share that tab. There you go. So see, you can see this right here. here. So you, when you select it, you know, like that's Inland Ocean, hooray. All right, going back here. Uh, so going back. Um, so after your kingdom principality, um, this is kind of where you're going to start adding in this huge question of what class do you want to play? So you could put class credit, you could put just whatever. And then um, this one, I like to make as a drop down because there's so many options. Let's see, on, we'll look at the preview that, that I made. So this, this one had 16 different options. And so as a multiple choice, that would be um, really annoying because it would be this huge block of text on your form. Um, so as a drop down, it'll condense that and then it'll pop those open after they select it. And I kind of like that better. <laughs> so again, it'll be on a drop down. We'll put Archer. Assassin. I'm not going to go through and make all of them because, again, this is just a, a how to, not an official form. Nobody's going to really be using this. Um, peasant, monster, paladin, whatever. Uh, again, this should be a required question. Oops. And so I know when I didn't make something required because there should be this red star that shows up right next to the question. So this one needs to be marked as required. That one, those are all good. Okay. Um, so now we have all of the necessary information that you need for a sign in sheet. So again, we've got the date, we've got the land they're from, we've got the kingdom slash principality they're from, their class credit. Um, and then also we have um, their names. So that's the bare minimum you need on a sign in sheet. But I like to always make things bigger and better. So I like to add questions at the end, like, did you enjoy your day? Um, is there any um, like feedback you have for the monarchy for the day? Anything like that? Like, those are all good questions to add to these types of sheets because they can double kind of as a survey like hey did we do a good job today because sometimes you have no idea <laughs> all right let's see i'm gonna check in and see if you guys got any questions not seeing any so that's good All right, so this one will make a long answer. Um, so again, and this question could be anything. It could be, hey, um, so-and-so did a great job at reaving today. You should recognize them for that. The feedback question could be, hey, there wasn't enough battle games, or hey, I felt like during this battle game, one team was too lopsided. Um, and these type of questions you don't have to mark as required because they're not. Um, that should be something that's optional for the players to fill out. Um, so that's cool. Um, Another cool feature you can do is you can link in other forms to your form. So if your land has a awards recommendation form, you could put that in here. So um, I don't have one on this drive, but I do have a couple other things that I could add in. So um, like I'll put in my assassin knowledge test here. So 
you can import this entire form into your um, into your sign in if you wanted. So you could add all of these, or, or if there's like questions in here you wanted to add. So if you did have um, like our awards recommendation, you could just pretty much combine those two forms. Not that that's necessary, but maybe you want to, you know, just an idea. Um, so now let's preview this from a viewer standpoint. Okay, so again, this is how it's going to look. Um, so I'll just do this. So month, so today, 0, 07, 0, 02, 2020, online event. So this is me physically filling it out. It highlighted the heraldry, so that's cool. Oops. See here, I accidentally had a... Forgot to get rid of that extra thing. That's okay. All right, so then I'll submit my answers. See, now this will say your response has been recorded. You can always like link, like, like add a separate link here. So you could say like, hey, visit our um, awards forms here. Um, or you could just use this to submit another one. Um, Trevor asks, um, do you foresee this replacing regular sign-in sheets at any point? Um, I think maybe for right now with coronavirus going on and us not being able to play at the park and use the mobile orc, I guess it would be a good tool to use. Um, as a permanent? No, I don't think so. Um, so other than, and then Josh has a question of other than sign in forms and award forms, what do you see the, what do you see the purpose of Google forms? Um, it's also good for collecting data. So if you want to do surveys to see, um, if your park's happy with like performance, uh, if your kingdom thinks that everything's going well, this is a good tool. Um, also, uh, I like to use Google forms for, um, like pre sign ups for uh, camp outs because you can ask like a thousand questions and get all the information you need from people and then it's all in one place. Oh, sorry, Duke. Yeah, you'll have to rewatch, buddy. <laughs> and then Mike says, Do you think that Google Sheets could replace ANS Sheets for competitions? They could. Um, I guess the only problem with that is that um, is that you wouldn't be able to have the physical sheet with the item. So you could do it if you just wanted the judges to look at the Excel spreadsheet. Um, but it might be a little difficult for ANS stuff. But. I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to link this to an Excel sheet. So we're going to go back to the form. So again, we're editing now. <clears throat> so I'm just going to refresh this real quick since I submitted one. So then here it has responses. And in theory, mine should be there, but it's not. Oh, wait. That's because I'm looking at the wrong one. Hold on. This one was my preview. There we go. See, I didn't save, but it's still there. It's great. <laughs> okay, so responses. So 
Um, this is how I used to look at all of the data on forms originally is I just go to the response tab, which is fine. Um, but so it'll show like the dates shows like the number, the percentage of like what events you participated in, the people who are signing in, but that's not what I'm looking for for this. So I want to be able to use this as a way to print out all the information after like six months. Like if I'm using this for six months, I want to be able to go back and not have all of this um, info. So, um, so questions is where you're going to edit and create the information that you need. Responses will show you the data that people have already given you. And then in the right hand corner, there's this little box right here that's green and it says create spreadsheet. So you just hit that. And it's going to have two different things. So it's going to say create a new spreadsheet. Wait, hold on. Let me name this first. Practice sign-in sheet. There we go. So create, and then it'll create a spreadsheet based off of all of the questions you've asked. And then every time somebody submits the form without you having to refresh, it's going to input that data into the form. It's awesome. You can also um, merge it with a pre-existing spreadsheet. Um, so if you've been making individual sign-in sheets over and over again, you could merge all of those spreadsheets together. Um, and then you could put this one into that as well. Uh, makes it a little bit more difficult, but that's one way to do it. So we're gonna create. So now that's loading. And now I have this great spreadsheet. I'm gonna zoom out on this a little bit so you guys can see it all the way. Okay. All right, so we've got all of our categories here that we wanted. Sorry, I like to make everything fit. I hate when it's all spread out. So I like to highlight, I like to color coordinate because it makes it easier to see. Um, so we've got all the very first row is all of the questions you've asked. So we're going to do alternating colors. I think this is the one I'm looking for. Oh, yep. Headers and footers. Let's do pink. Why not? Done. Okay. Oh gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> um, let's see. We'll make this a little bigger. Okay, so here you have the timestamp. So the timestamp is nice because it shows exactly what time I submitted. So if I put in my date here, if I said that I signed in today, you could look at the timestamp and they, you could be like, ooh, she actually signed in on the 4th. She's trying to cheat her credits, right? So this is a way to ensure that your actual that your players are actually signing in on the dates that they're supposed to rather than them signing in a week two weeks late um and trying to get the credits even though they did not participate in the activity the day of um oh uh let's see our regent has a question real quick uh how about creating sheets for gate duty kitchen duty etc yes um uh, when I was going to be running gate for Olympiad, I had created a sheet specifically for gate duty with um, an entire format for time slots, dates, um, all of that. So you could definitely use these for that same stuff. Um, so then again, so it's got each question that I answered. So it shows my real name. It shows the land. So let me share this sheet with you guys real quick and I'll have you also input your data and I'll show you how it like automatically 
revamp. So you guys just can just enter in whatever you want. So I'll show you how to share. So we're gonna go back here. So we got our questions, responses. Then up top, you've got how to change the color palette, the preview, if you wanna see how it looks from a viewer standpoint, your settings and send. Um, so settings, I like to look real quick. So you can change your sign-ins to limit to one response per person. I also like to collect email addresses in case maybe it's a new player and you need more information from them to create um, their ORC. Um, I never allow respondents to edit after they submit unless it's some sort of questionnaire where I'm trying to gather data. Um, and then I usually don't allow them to see the summary charts and text responses because sometimes the information isn't stuff that needs to be shared. Um, presentation, if you wanted to make a quiz for like, um, <clears throat> like Reeve qualified and whatnot, you could show a progress bar. Um, you could shuffle the questions if you want to try to like trick them. Maybe they're trying to share answers with their friends. Um, and then again, so you can make it as a quiz as well. So it says make a quiz and you can assign points values. So there's lots of different things you can do with these forms. Um, so to send, we're going to hit the send button and you can send it via email if you want to just collect emails. Um, you can add collaborators. So what that means is people who can edit this document as well. So if you want to share with your Monarch, your GMR, all of those people, that's a collaborator. And then there's um, this format. So like if you want to put it onto a website, so that way it creates a link, that's great. This is an actual link. Um, you could also send it via just Facebook or Twitter. I like to shorten the URLs because otherwise they're just huge. Copy. And I'm going to hit cancel. Um, and then we're going to post it up on the Facebook in the comments real quick so you guys can fill it out as well so you can see how it updates. Sorry, I got to hop on the Facebook real quick. Yes, Josh says uh, collecting email is a great way to create a mailing list. That is correct. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so I just caught put that in the comments if you guys want to fill it out real fast. Uh, again, this is not a real sign in sheet. You're not getting a credit by filling this out. <laughs> so I'm not trying to trick you. Um, but just so you can see how it works. And now these will work on a cell phone. These will work on a tablet. These will work on your computer. So uh, very versatile once you send out that, um, that link. I'm gonna try to change this color because this is terrible. Oh, it already updated. Do you guys see that? <laughs> it happened so fast. I'm just like sitting here and it just like popped up. So you can see that Bail Norn signed in. Uh, 
and Mythius has signed in. You see how quick this is? Like, it's just automatically doing it. It's crazy. <laughs> see, and now we've got email addresses down here. So if I uh, had a question and I needed to reach out to you individually and I, for whatever reason, like if your prime minister doesn't have like a Facebook, um, but they create this form, send it to the monarch to post onto your Facebook page to use, um, then this allows your prime minister to also have a way to communicate without having the necessary need for Facebook. Because not everybody wants a Facebook or whatever. Um, so this is kind of like that workaround for them to be able to do their job since we're not meeting up at the parks um, without having to have a social media presence. Boom, 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 boom. Worm is signed in. Um, so if you guys haven't used um, spreadsheets all that much, um, you can filter them. So that way you can organize your data in ways that you want. Um, so right here up in the, uh, the rows here, they have like ABC. There's a little box that pops up when you highlight it. And then you can sort in different ways. So like A to Z. So you can sort the type of event. You can sort it by date. Oh, see, uh, Mythius is trying to test out the, the date theory. See, so he typed in 4-23-1971, but you can see the timestamp is 7-2-2020, right? So again, double checking, did they actually sign in when they said they did? Cool little feature. Um, you can sort it out by location. So we all know, for those of us who have participated as a prime minister, you know that your orc, um, it's easiest if you input everybody who's been from one park first. So like if you're kingdom prime minister and there's eight different parks that came to a KLE, um, going through and sorting it by everybody from Greenwood Keep first, everybody by Inland Ocean second, um, it makes inputting those records much faster rather than trying to bounce back and forth just because of the way that the orc is set up. Um, so you can sort it by land. So you highlight land, hit that little box, the little drop down box right there, and then sort A to Z. And then now you got everybody in the right order for what land they're from. Um, and then for those of you who are thinking, well, like, how do I really keep track of after I've inputted their credits and we start using this more and more, like, how do I make a note like that? I already did that. So what I would suggest doing is you highlight the ones that you're finished. So you drag down and I would just change the color. So you could put a strike out through it. You could uh, do a fill in color. Um, so like if I or already signed you guys all in, I could do this. Boom. Now I know the next time that I go through and do credits, if it's in red, it's been entered. So that's a, a good way to kind of, uh, make a mental note for when you're going through and typing in credits. Um, so what I really like about being able to link that Excel sheet to the form is that in a few months, you'll have to print out all these sign-in sheets because uh, with Northern Lights, we require that you keep those records, you keep them in your prime minister's box. Um, because once we go to coronation or mid rain, we have to go over elevation or de-elevation of lands, right? So you have to have all of that information easily available which allows you to then um, print. I don't have a printer, so I can't show you the printout version, but uh, I'll show you what it looks like from the print settings. <clears throat> so obviously there's a lot of like extra stuff here, so you'll have to um, edit the sheet. Highlight it and print selection too. Yeah, so 
So either you can get rid of all of these extra columns, which is kind of annoying. Um, but then Ormus reminded me that you can also highlight all of this stuff. Oof. So you can highlight these guys, all of the stuff that you need. Um, Oh, I'm selecting the wrong stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, because then it highlights everything from over. Well, we just have to not be lazy and just do it manually then and just grab. Don't be lazy. Not like that. Like just highlight the individual cell and then drag to where you want it to be. Oh. Boom. Okay. There we go. And then print. I think it's in the. Oh, you fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So file and then print. But then, so it, it'll have everything printed out. Um, Should be an option for print selection. Um, Maybe not anymore. There used to be. Formatting. I don't think I've done that. Since uh, high school, though, so it was like 2006. I'm sure the program's changed. Yeah. Anyways, you can mess with all your settings and stuff and kind of figure it out. But you can print print everything out this way, which is really nice. Um, fit to height. No, it's not any better. <laughs> oh, up there was his current sheet. Maybe, maybe try that. Selected oh, sales. Selected ah, sales. Nailed it. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> There, so you just select your cells. There you go. See, now you can see everything. And then obviously you can cut out like the email. So it's going to print it in two. So you don't need like the feedback or anything. So you could just start from class credit and go over. Oh. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's some dinner left. Um, okay. What is the rice? Uh, yes, Michael, you could create a color legend. All right. Um, so do you guys have any questions? Um, there's a lot of things you can do with this. So your options are honestly limitless. <laughs> What was option one on the sheet? I didn't select it, but. Oh, it was just something I didn't delete. Option oh. one, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll show you how to delete too, since I forgot about that. So when you're editing, there's this little garbage can right here. You can just delete that. I do think that was funny that some people selected it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rice. <Bryce. laughs> you heard your comment about oh. rice. <laughs> <laughs> there's tacos too. I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, so again, looking at our responses, cause there's six of us who have inputted. So, so you can see group responses. So uh, if this was like a KLE information, if I wanted to see how many people from each land came, I could see a percentage here, um, which is honestly really cool. So you can see how many people from each group are traveling to each KLE, which is nice. Um, Oh, that'd be good to have anyway. Yeah, so you can see land. Uh, oh, who's, who's winning? You can see class credits too. So, like, if you're like, how many people are actually playing wizard or whatever, you can see that. The battery's running low. It should be plugged in. I might have unplugged it to plug something else in. Oh. Or I unplugged my computer. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Try to get around the rabbit. Uh, oh, so, definitely. if you want to end up turning off your sign-in sheet. So let's say we start playing Amp Guard at a normal park day again, and you guys are like, okay, no more online work, no more online sign-in sheets, um, but you don't want to go through and find each individual link, right? Because that might be crazy. Maybe you've posted up the link a thousand times. Um, there's this little spot that says accepting responses. So you won't see it under questions because that's where you edit. It'll be under responses. 
responses. And all you'll have to do is hit this. So if it's off to the right, it means it's still open. If you close it, you're no longer accepting responses. So when somebody clicks on that link, maybe it's posted up in your um, description of your group or whatever, uh, it won't work. It'll say this form is no longer accepting responses. So they won't be able to use it as a sign in. Um, <laughs> and then you can always turn it back on again if you want to use it. Um, oh, no. You can also see individual responses. So you can see via by email. So um, that's cool. You can print out uh, all of the information from here as well or individual prints. Um, let's see. Um, you can unlink the form, which means unlinking it from the Excel sheet. Uh, you can set it up so you get email notifications for new responses. So if you're the prime minister and you're not checking the Excel sheet all the time because of you're busy, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> you can set it up so it emails you. So if somebody signs in on a Wednesday night at fighter practice, but you're not there, you can be like, oh, cool, I know I need to sign it and check my sign-ins and enter them all. Um, let's see, so, um, extra stuff, um, so again, adding collaborators, we can go over that a little bit more. <clears throat> um, So for adding collaborators, you can do it um, one of two ways. Um, so option A, you can send it via an email. Um, so like I could add Ormus here. I yeah. could send him an email. And then he can be a editor. And then I just send that to him. And then he could go in and edit it and um, change the questions. Or I can change his settings after, because once you're the owner, that means that you have all control. So I could make him an owner or I could remove him as a collaborator, like, like I just did. Super oh, easy. How is he going to change stuff? Yeah. Um, you can also send people a link. So, um, it's restricted. Only people can open with this link. So if you want to make it pretty private, so, um, just no, not any, any rando can use the form. So that way anyone with the link, um, and then you can change it. You can make them an editor. I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> um, let's see. Cool. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. But makes it really easy. This way you can use the same form um, over and over and over again. You don't have to recreate a new one every weekend yeah you can put it to the, you can pin it as an announcement to the top of your group you can reshare that same link constantly um you could share it on you know your instagram whatever 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 social media platforms your guys are using again you can send it via email um makes it pretty cool So you can see that 
more people have signed in, kind of played with it again. Ormus signed in twice, apparently. Did I? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I don't know. I only want to do it once. <laughs> I mean, I signed in while I was peeing, but I'm pretty sure I only signed in once. Michael says that this would be great for event planning. Yes. Yes, it is. It's a wonderful tool for event planning. Um, I'll actually show you guys the sheet that I made. There's a couple different sheets that I made. Um, let's see. Got to get there first. Let's see. Okay, so sharing this one. So this is one that I made for Pack War. Um, So this one was going to be for um, Gate Volunteer. That was really hard <laughs> to think about. Um, so again, I required an email address. So if I needed to get a hold of them, because maybe, uh, especially with the Olympiad, that's like a national level event. So maybe there's somebody from, I don't know, New York coming in and they want to help with Gate. You know, so um, I had a little blurb here of like, what is Gate? How do you do it? I asked for their name. Where do they play out of Land and Kingdom? Uh, I wanted to know if they were 18 years of age or older. Um, and then I had like an under 18. I was going to be very strict about no under 18 people working my Gate because it deals with money. Um. And then I also wanted to know like if they'd ran a, sh a gate shift before by themselves. And then here I had um, a time frame plus mornings. So again, so like uh, like Thursday, 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, so that was the the overall like what the time frame for gate was going to be open. And then uh, you could highlight if you wanted to work afternoons, evenings. Um, here, look at a preview. Um, you can also create sections. So this one was based off of in sections. So I'll show you how that works. Um, so when you have multiple sections, you can link each individual question. So like if they hit yes or no, you can send them to a different section in the form based off of their answer. Um, so it kind of makes each area of the form a little bit more smaller. And if you don't need extra information, they just skip an entire question, which is nice. Um, and then, so if I hit no for 18 years or older, this would go here and it would be like, sorry, can't be in gate. And then um, you could also ask, set it up so that way you can send a response to yourself. So if you filled out a questionnaire and you wanted to have a copy of your responses, you could send it to yourself. So now if I hit yes, you'll see a different screen. Boom. So now this is like asking me more questions. So have you done gate before? Yes. And then here I could fill out the times and the date of the days that I'm willing to work gate. Um, and I didn't want people to be working like a ton of days so or a ton of hours. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to know like if there was an activity they wanted to be a part of. So I'd be like main tournament, whatever. Uh, so that way I could try to avoid scheduling them for that time. Because this is just like a guesstimation of like the time frames that they would like to work. Um, obviously after 20 people submit the form, you're going to have to work with those people and create a f actual schedule. So, and then it would be done. And then I had a link here for a Facebook group that I had created. Um, so after they sent that form, they could join the group and then we could start discussing like actual planning of the things. So, and then you would submit and it'd be like, edit your response. 
So this is one that I did allow them to edit the responses in case um, a new event came up and they wanted to have that event off or if there was a new, um, or if there was like, maybe they weren't going to be there on Thursday, maybe they were only going to be on there on Friday, Saturday, then they could change that, you know? Um, but yeah, <coughs> let's see. So again, forms are pretty fun because there's lots of different things you can do with it. Um, Event registration. This is the one I had for Pack War. Um, so I had the address. I had all sorts of stuff. Um, oh, sorry. This is the different one. Hold on. I've made a lot of forms. <laughs> um, Anyways, I had one for for uh, Olympiad. Oh, wait. Is it this one? Here we go. Yeah. Um, so, again, this one had sections. So, you can see it's section two of five. Again, this, this is where pictures came in. Like, do you want a cabin or are you bringing your RV? <laughs> Um, you can see this one. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Um, Caitlin, people were asking if they could get credits for this video today. I have a, another video happening on the 10th um, next week. Um, so if we can't do today, maybe we could do then. Uh, Crown AMA. Oh yeah, yeah. So I guys, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to listen to me and Ormus talk and a few other people, we're doing a Crown AMA yeah. next Friday, not tomorrow, but the Friday after that. Um, I'll remember it by then. Um, so again, if I hit no for the age restriction, that would bump it to who is your guardian. And then they could hit next, and then it would ask them the standard questions of where they're from. Uh, Noah says, or both for um, credits. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> More credits. Yeah. Uh, you can see the People who are in monarchy, not me. <laughs> um, so this Mike, one, I, make it a make it an IO day. Yeah, this <laughs> one I went through and listed all the kingdoms and principalities because just felt necessary. I don't know. <laughs> I asked if they want to be in the louder quiet camp, but yeah. So any questions? you guys you want to see the spreadsheet again do you want to see how to uh create something is there i'm willing to show things over again if you want i'm pretty open And if not, that's okay too. We can call it a night. Uh, what are the pros cons for keeping guardian information for underage and players? Um, so that was for like a Olympiad. So um, pros, if they get hurt, I know who to contact. Um, cons i don't know i mean i've always thought it as more of a positive to know like who their um guardians are especially for campouts you need to know who they're supposed to be camping with 
who's the parent, especially now with our new underage policies put into place, um, protecting the minors. We've got to be able to uh, um, ensure that we know who they're supposed to be hanging out with. So um, having even the guardian's <coughs> contact information. So like uh, a lot of minors who are like 16, 17, you know, they go to events by themselves. Um, but for like their minor sheets, sometimes they have like a friend of the family sign for them. Um, so knowing who they're camping with and stuff is really important, I would say. Um, at the land level, you won't necessarily really need as much information because you're probably meeting their parents every time. Yeah, Duke, especially with the new COC, very important to know who's in charge of them. Because <laughs> uh, I feel like at gate, like, if you're the gatocrat and you have that information, uh, if that minor is making trouble or has gotten into trouble or something happens to them, they can come find the information at gate and say, who do we call? Um, who do we need to talk to? Um, I think even for like event forms, you could make go into more detail. Like, do you have any allergies that we should be aware of? Um, so that way, if like you get stung by a bee and you're unable to tell people that you're hurt and need to go to the hospital, um, that's something they can find out at gate. Um, this was Gwyn sponsored tonight. It's just something that I wanted to do to help out the kingdom. So if the kingdom wants to sponsor it, cool. If not, that's all right. <laughs> <sighs> yeah bail norn's correct yep i wanted i wanted to do it i i love forms i love data um so this was just me helping out Um, they, I mean, they could be as in depth or as little as you want, Caitlin, honestly, I just like to add a bunch of extra stuff, but she's a chronic overachiever. I am. Yeah. I like to overachieve. I just feel like the more, the more info you have, the better. Um, Why am I not drinking? Um, I didn't have any beverages to drink. The fridge is disturbingly empty right now. It is. It's very empty, especially when it comes towards the alcoholic beverage side. Um, uh, Caitlin, do you have any questions on forms or how to link it to? Uh, I'm not sure if you came in when I linked it to the um, Excel sheet. I could show that again if anybody wants to see um, pretty much whatever. Give you guys a few more minutes to type up any questions you have, and then I'm going to bounce out. I missed the whole thing. Oh, sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I reuse uh, the form with dates. Um, but yeah, you can import the questions from different forms into a new form. Uh, you can also import all of your old sheet, all of your old forms, and combine them into one Excel sheet as well.
to make it easier to keep track. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Whatever makes things easier for us in the long run, honestly. We don't know how long we're going to be not physically playing. So if it makes your lives easier, um, especially in the prime minister sense, I'm glad I could do it. So. Um. Waiting to see if they have any more questions. Pretty much everybody's saying thank you, but. We miss IO too. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to sign off. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm more than willing to walk through it with you again. Um, and then this will be uploaded, obviously, and saved on the NL group. I did stream it off of my personal page as well. So if you guys want to share it to your individual <coughs> lands, please feel free. Um, let's, you know, spread the love and uh, teach some stuff. So when we get to play again, where's the first place you're going to travel to? Um, well, I'll hit up my home park first for sure. But after that, I don't know. Um, Oh, maybe flooded mountains. It'd be cool to go and visit our new land. Hell no, that's way out there. <laughs> it's really far, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, that'd be good to go and support them and see them and help them out. Because I know being a new land and kind of getting struck right at the beginning of the virus kind of sucks. So um, maybe them. Um, Greenwood Keep would be a good place. Yeah. Point. Get some good battle gaming in. Black Spire. Black Spire would be fun. Uh, wherever the first tournament is happening, that's where we're going to go. <laughs> so. But, all right, guys. You have a good night, and thanks for watching. Hope I answered questions and was helpful. Um, and, again, if you need to look over things again, please feel free to rewatch the video or send me a PM, and I can help you out. All right. Bye, guys.